While I've turned into Uber Daddy, I have to go pick up school supplies. That's what it's come to. I went to the barn this morning, went to the fair, we'll talk about that in a minute, and then I was asked to go and pick up school supplies. Okie dokie. So, uh, went to, we had five horses race already today. I went to the fair in Morrow County Fair in Mount Gilead. I've been there before, a nice little fair, a nice little town. Uh, we raced three horses. Now, I didn't know, is Gypsy Hill gonna get around the track? You know, you can't go into the races being uh, overly confident. This is a fair, right? You don't know, maybe some of those horses aren't as good as your horse, but the great equalizer would be a little, a little bull ring in the middle of nowhere. Uh, a little fair track. So uh, would Gypsy get around? Would he do all right? I didn't hear Gypsy Hill hit himself at all today. I was super careful with him at the gate. I didn't want him on the run. I did think if he trots, probably shouldn't get beat. But I wasn't going to take anything for granted. So I really just kept him back a little bit at the start. Uh, caught up the quarter, let him rest. Moved him down the back stretch to get him going in case I had to nurse him through the last turn. But wanted to get the leader pretty well collared. Um, and he ended up trotting by him down the back stretch and winning the race. I was really happy with him. Um, you know, it was funny because a really nice guy come up to me after and he was angry because his horse kind of got, he didn't get the trip he wanted. It was, it was a different race, a pace race and didn't get the trip that he wanted. And he said, you know, this is a good horse. And you know, I just got beat at a fair, a fair. I said, well, there's tough horses here sometimes. He goes, not really. I said, well, that one that I just raced is racing for 300,000 next week, in case you're wondering. So, yeah, there could be some tough horses here. I said, I don't know who you raced against, but, you know, it's a tough little track. And if the horses don't get over it well, it doesn't take long for a real good horse and an okay horse to come to par when you're dealing with a, a small little tight sandy track like Mount Gilead. Either way, the track was great. The horses raced good. I was happy with Gypsy Hill, and he was happy with himself after. So good trip for him. Uh, Venice Blue Chip, I didn't really know what to think going in. Man, she's been flat her last two, and although her mile was decent today, was I thrilled? There was a voice in the back of my head saying, hey, Anthony, you know, you have seven horses up for sale. This filly's, this filly's eligible to race for $100,000 next weekend in the Sire Stakes Consolation. So I'm going to marinate on that a little bit. I'm going to think about that. You know, she's made good money this year. She's taken a, a qualifying mark of 57. She's paced 53. Although I think she's a much better horse than she's advertising currently, as many of them do as two-year-olds. Um, I think there's still lots there. And it's not like she's exhausted or angry. She's just not quite uh, what she was before. And and I wish I, I had... Listen, I have a laundry list of reasons why it could be. But nothing definitive. Nothing I can just put my finger on and say, this is the reason that Venice Blue Chip is not as good as the night we raced her in the next generation. I don't have an answer for you. But hopefully we will over the next little bit. And as I said... Been an okay filly for us. You know, made back some money, did okay. What does a sale next week look like for her? She is racing for 100. She still has one grassroots she's eligible to race in on Delaware Week and Jug, uh, jug Week. She has at least one, if not two, races left after that consolation. So, an interesting prospect, I think. I never really thought about it until... Um, after the race, to be honest. So I will talk to uh, the stakeholders, my partners, in, and to be quite frank, a major stakeholder is Blue Chip Farms themselves, and I don't know if Tom Grossman has any appetite to sell her. Maybe he just wants to, you know, get a good mark on her and, and race her at three and breed her. I have no idea. I'd have to talk to him. So that's what went on with those two. Now Prince Charmer race good. I can't help but think maybe I took, maybe I didn't give enough respect to, to Drew Neal's horse, uh, Rosie Weaver's horse. I didn't really fire him up at the gate. Um, again, do I want to blast Prince Charmer into, into the turn on a little track? Maybe not. So I took my time, got away third, moved him down the back stretch, cleared off the lead, and quite frankly, I thought the race was over. He's going to coast, running in a bit in the last turn. And again, uh, Jason Merriman had asked me, hey, I think you wore a Murphy blind on the left at Northfield. I said, yes, I did. He said, do you want me to go grab it? I said, no, it'd be fine. I wish I had had it on. Now, did it, did it cost me the win? Probably not. 
Prince raced okay. You know, for me, I've already reserved myself to the fact that I believe he's going to be a good three-year-old. I believe Prince Charmer is going to be one of our better three-year-olds next year. That's a lofty statement because we get some nice horses. But I believe he will. I like the horse. I think he's got a lot going on for him, and, and I like everything about him. So Prince Charmer was second. I'm going to put some of that on me. I think some of it on me. Taking for granted that if he just trotted, he'd win. You should never do that. I just finished telling you you can't do that going into any race, certainly not at a fair, and I can't help but feel that maybe I did a little bit with Prince. So uh, an okay second for him. Again, a very similar time-wise, a very similar mile to to, uh, to Gypsy. So um, And right now, those two Colts are quite a ways apart. I got to watch uh, Cutie Cummer race. Ah! Maybe I got her out in the line. Well, you can't move her in the last turn at Poconos, but had he moved her in the last turn, I think she's probably second. Trots in 56 and 2. Instead, she was third, trot in 56 and 4, 56 and 3. Thought she raced pretty good, though. Good mile for her. Uh, getting closer, I got till the end of September to get that mile in 55. I told uh, Megan I thought she'd take a mark of 55 uh, by the end of September a while ago. We'll see if that comes to fruition, but she raced good today. And then our girl, Sunset Acres girl, talk about thinking the horses are just going to win, 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 win. You know, we think that, you know, she's tons the best in Michigan. She got beat today and got beat fair and square. He drove her the way he had to, got away in the two hole. It was pretty clear that I, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, that was Tim Driver on the front. It was pretty obvious that he wanted to cut the mile and uh, moved Derek down the back stretch, almost cleared. He did everything right. Then coming out of the turn, cleared the lead, and somebody picked her off. That's racing. She raced good, though, and, and still, regardless with that loss, I would still think she'll be the favorite heading into the final. We just need a decent draw. Somewhere in the middle of the gate would be nice. Or the rail. Two hole and getting pushed into the turn. I'd rather take four or five, to be honest. But we'll see. Hopefully she just draws okay. Better than eight, because that's what we have lots of this week better than any for sure but will as i said play the hand we're dealt in that regard so so far today we've had two winners at the fairs with gypsy hill and venice blue chip we've had a second with prince charmer we've had a second with sunset acres girl and we've had a third with cutie cumber not a bad day two wins two seconds and a third in uh five starts i can think of worse days for sure still got a couple more to go tonight uh we'll be watching them good luck to everybody i want to uh hope we have some good luck tonight horses anyway uh, I'm mostly done for the day. I may not give you, I doubt I'll give you an update after tonight. I'll, I'll give you an update tomorrow morning. I'm going to be on my way to the Meadows and then coming right back for tomorrow night. A ton of stuff going on tomorrow. Very, very busy day. Wednesday, Thursday is going to be pretty busy. Friday again, pretty busy. And then Saturday I'm off to the Poconos. And as soon as the race is over at the Poconos, driving back to Ontario, it is Oliver's last baseball tournament of the year. Of the year. Uh, this weekend. So good luck to everybody tonight. I will talk to you all very soon. Take care.